Hi all, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Misa Alodia and today I'll be giving my point of view of Beethoven's very first sonata, Sonata Opus 2 Number no. 1 in F minor, which is also dedicated for his teacher Hayden. Beethoven is well known not only of his composition but also his life. Beethoven was lonely, frequently miserable throughout his adult life. And I believe this loneliness, miserable and short temper of his can be found in this sonata. Let's start from the opening. As we can see, it's an ascending arpeggio of the tonic key F minor. It's also called the Mannheim Rocket. The Mannheim Rocket is a musical technique in which a rising figure, a scale or arpeggio speeded up and grew louder as it rose higher and higher. This Mannheim Rocket technique can also be found on Mozart Symphony No. 40 at the opening of the fourth movement. This opening is quite unusual in sonata, not to mention it's also in minor key. The single notes opening of this first movement sounds like loneliness and give a haunting effect to me. As if Beethoven shared his despair in this sonata. This ascending arpeggio pattern or the Mannheim rocket pattern become the main subject of the first movement. Let's continue. In only the first eight bars, this sonata already shows a strong contrast, starting from the main subject, lonely single nose arpeggio, then increasingly starting to a brutal, fearless grand climax, piano to fortissimo, in only eight bars. This is what I meant by Beethoven short tempered. Moreover, there are a lot of sections where the key changes to major. For instance, here, after the climax, the subject was played in its dominant key C minor. But then, suddenly changed to major key, which is quite unexpected. For me, it shows someone who were at their lowest, but then the good nostalgic memories suddenly cross their mind, but still, they aren't happy right now. It may be Beethoven himself, or just him telling a story. The flattened seats. And in this section, a tremolo alike on the left hand, repeated octave apart notes that create a shivering effect, played with descending dominant 7 of the A flat major. But instead of F, Beethoven intentionally flattened the 6, become F flat. This create a total different vibes. Here it is if it was played in A flat major key. And now with the flat and six. Much different, right? And this part occurred numerous times in the Allegro movement, played in different key. But is that the only interesting things in this section? Of course not. Let's take a look. The descending pattern that I mentioned before are played three times. As it's getting more and more intense, of course, after the third time, we're anticipating the F flat for Jando. But what do we get? A rest and major key. As if there's a small hope and he's trying to reach it. And here we had the Sunday scale of A flat major, followed by the four Jando on the left hand. flat and turn. After the grand descending scale of A flat major, while changing to expressione or expressively, again, Beethoven flattened the third. Instead of C, it's flattened to C flat. And what makes it interesting is that major key is minor key with the third and sixth being flattened down. Let's take an example, A major. If I flatten the third, C sharp become C natural and the 6 F sharp to F natural is now A minor as in the previous section we had the 6 being flattened down now we had the 3rd being flattened down this is very interesting yet astonishing way of composing back in the days I used to be playing the notes in the sheet without giving much talk about it but now 
the pieces I'm playing seem much more sense as I keep on analyzing. That's why it's important to explore the pieces and discover the hidden message that the composer tried to convey to the audience. Conclusion In this allegro movement, I can see the major minor ambiguity, although overall it's still in minor key. This shows how Beethoven tried to get up from his miserable life, but still there's something that keeps turning him down, not only the work but also himself. So this is my analysis summary of the allegro movement. You can find my analysis of the remaining movement in the description below. Thank you!